Charles Baxter wrote in Burning Down the House, Essays on Fiction, when all the details fit in perfectly, something is probably wrong with the story. Always keep that in mind. We ain't never shooting for perfection. Every painting I've ever started looks completely different than the initial vision I had in my head. Forgive yourself constantly of what you call mistakes. There really aren't too many mistakes in art, just unforeseen forks in the road leading us to unexpectedly interesting places. One thing that happens to me a lot is, in the middle of a work of art, I look at it half done and sort of think, this probably isn't going to look that good, only to find out everything looks just fine in the end. I myself am getting better and better at remembering this as I go along about my artistic endeavors. And sometimes I don't like a painting once it's done, but after looking at it after not seeing it for a good while, I realize I actually do like it a lot. This is sometimes because of what I mentioned before, that paintings always look different than we set out to make them look. The trick is to expect this to happen. Our final should always look different than the initial inspiration anyways. It's the ride between the inspiration and the finished artwork that we really need to learn to enjoy. I've often said that the very most enjoyable parts of a painting is the beginning idea and handing the painting over to someone. It's the part between that we need to get through. As you go on in your art life, you can get way ahead of the game by learning to love the entire process from start to finish. I've been doing this a long time, and I'm still learning to do so. So don't feel bad about it not happening right off the bat. We are all, after all, human. Okay, let's lighten up our blue paint with some white paint. Make whatever random pattern you think would look good. I'm going with some nice rounded shapes to give it a cartoony rough skin effect. Now, throw down some red paint and mix a little white into it to make a nice pink. Doesn't have to be pink since the eye is a reflective surface. Just make sure the values are a little higher than the red so you're painting a highlight. I'm going to highlight the top and bottom edges of the eye. Now, since we already have some white out, let's put a reflective dot on the eye as well as do some random highlights around the bird's face. You can skip the beak highlight as I will be changing it later, but it still looks good this way. Now you can see some life in the painting. This surely is one of the most satisfying parts. Now we can use the same white to liven up the chest area. Put your own style into the pattern if you feel like it. These tutorials really exist to show you some tactics for expressing your own visual awesomeness to show the world. Now let's lighten the dark blue. We will use this color for highlighting the left of the wing. Now lighten up the green with white and we will do some nice patterns to represent the feathers.
and then we will use yellow to lighten up the tops of all of them. Now use some straight up pool blue to do some nice highlights on the left of the wing and the individual feathers. Then we can use yellow mixed with white to do some more highlighting. I did not plan any of this before I painted it. I have a lot of fun painting in this style. And I think if you use some of my simple methods, you might just see something you like. At least I hope you will. Sometimes the paint already on your palette will throw suggestions at you as to what color to use. Now mix some orange, red, and white to make sort of a light peach color. We will highlight the head with this. You can follow along with me or go where your instincts take you. Either way, have you some fun with it. I changed my mind on the beak, choosing to go a little more flat as far as highlights. I highlighted the beak top and opening to put some random stippling to make a nice texture. Now it is time to sign it and call it done. Might be weird to say, might not, but sometimes I feel like quitting. Five minutes into a painting, I will sometimes look and think there is no way this will look right. This is only a brief passing on one I feel at times. But that feeling will snowball into questions of my self-worth and why am I even here questions. 
I tell myself what an awful artist I am. And when things are slow, no wonder none of my art is selling. I flat out suck. This type of depression and self-doubt plagues us all. Remember, Pain and Longers, that sometimes we beat up ourselves for no good reason. And we should get out of the habit of saying so many bad things to ourselves. We say things to ourselves we wouldn't say to anyone we cared about, and we surely would not say such things to a friend having a similar problem who needs our advice. We would tell them encouraging things and that everything could get better over time. Let's learn to go easy on ourselves and to say nicer things to ourselves. To quote a man, how lucky I am to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. So goodbye for this project. And remember to email me some pictures of your paintings you did while watching this. I will post them on the Paint Along page of my site. There's a link on the sidebar. Just click the email link on my site, jasonwrightstudios.com, where I also sell paintings, prints, and take commissions. Thank you for painting along, paint alongers. See you in the next project.